Hello to your friends, this is your personal English coach Professor DC and in this video we are going to understand a very important poem. This goes by the name of The Heart of the Tree. This poem is written by Henry Kyla Bunner. Right from our childhood we have been listening the importance of planting a tree, growing a tree and the benefits associated with it. What are the several benefits associated with planting a tree? There are social benefits, communal benefits, environmental benefits and economic benefits. If you just take a walk in the woods, if you just take a walk during early mornings or during the evenings, after a tough day or a difficult day, trees and plants can help reduce your stress. There are certain hospitals wherein the patients have shown to recover from surgery more quickly when their hospital room offered a view of trees. Your schools must have been surrounded by a lot of trees. And why is that so? Because children have been shown to retain more of the information taught in schools if they spend some time outdoors in green spaces. If you are living in a society and if you plant a tree, you will notice that most people of the society love to spend time under the tree or around the tree. In the streets, trees have a calming effect. The traffic moves slowly and safely because of the presence of trees. When buildings are made, Special planning is done for the plantation of different types of trees to enhance the view, to complement the design. And you already know how trees reduce the temperature and heat that is generated as a result of industrialization. Trees and plants improve our air quality by filtering harmful dust and pollutants. And because they constantly give out oxygen, it is a boon to all the living creatures. Well planted trees can also reduce storms, erosions and flooding. Let's talk about wildlife. There are so many species of wildlife that just depend on trees for their habitat. Trees provide food protection and homes for so many birds and animals. Let's come back to this poem. In this poem, Henry Kyler Bunner in 1912 has demonstrated, has exhibited, has presented several benefits of planting a tree in a very interesting and poetic manner. On my screen, you can see the original poem on the left side with meanings of difficult words on its right. So while I am explaining, you can pause my videos and write down the meanings of difficult words in your textbooks. By that, you will remember the word meanings very quickly. And as already seen on my screen, this poem has three stanzas. Each stanza consists of nine lines. So why don't we get started with stanza number one. What does he plant who plants a tree? The poet starts with asking a question. If there's a person who plants a tree, who tries to grow a tree, is he just planting a structure with branches and stems and leaves? or maybe flowers and fruits and vegetables? What does a person really bring in when he or she tries to plant a tree? Line number two, he plants a friend of sun and sky. The poet has mentioned trees as friends of the sun and friends of the sky. Now, let's go back to science. You may remember from your school, 
that trees interact with sunlight using a process called photosynthesis. This is a process where the trees synthesizes food from carbon dioxide and water producing important nutrients. So this is how trees are the friends of sun. And how are trees friends of the sky? By removing carbon dioxide from the air, trees are one of our strongest allies in fighting against the climate change. Trees would eliminate about two-thirds of the carbon that's in the atmosphere today as a result of human activities according to the study made by some of the Western countries. And therefore, the poet rightly mentions that if a person plants a tree, it can prove to be beneficial to the overall atmosphere. Line number three, he plants the flag of breezes free. So what is breeze? Breeze is a gentle wind that sometimes keep flowing in the atmosphere. Here the poet has compared the leaves of the tree with that of a flag which will fly in between the mild and calmly flowing breeze. So you can imagine a long and tall tree with a lot of leaves and the sound of wind whispering through the trees. Now sometimes people use this sound to meditate, to calm their mind and focus. So here the poet says, when you plant a tree, you're planting the flag of breezes. Line number four, the shaft of beauty towering high. Now you can imagine a spear or an arrow. Now the long and narrow handle of a spear or an arrow is called a shaft. So which part of the tree can be compared to that of a shaft? The stem, the stem can be compared to that of the shaft. So again, if you imagine a long and beautiful tree and when you look at it, it will reflect beauty. A tall and high tower-like structure with a strong stem, which is nothing but its shaft looking so beautiful amidst the calmly flowing breeze. He plants a home to heaven and I. Where do we usually assume heavens to be? We usually assume heavens to be up in the sky. Let's also consider line number six here. For song and mother croon of bird. So the person who's planting a tree is also establishing a home for the birds who will be near to the heavens because of the heights of the trees. Anai is near. So all the birds, including those that sing melodiously, will have a home up above the stem in between the branches at a great height near the heaven. What is croon? Croon is a soft, low voice or a tone. Long, high and dense trees can become a great habitat for some of the various migratory birds that we see. Let's take in account line number 7, 8 and 9. In hushed and happy twilight heard the treble of heaven's harmony. These things he plants. Who plants a tree? So let's take the word meanings in account. What is hushed? Hushed is very quiet and still calm, silent, serene. And what is twilight? I should have written the meaning here. But twilight is the time of the day immediately following the sunset. So you must have noticed that when the sun sets, the atmosphere is usually calm and quiet. So during those times, what happens? The treble of heaven's harmony is heard. Although I've mentioned the meaning of treble as high-pitched voice, in here it means the chirping of birds. In general, the exact meaning is the pitch range of the highest female voice or you can say soprano. So 
if a tree is planted and if it grows out to be tall, strong and dense, there will be some birds sitting on top of the tree and chirping melodiously, especially during the time of twilight. And the poet calls this scenario to be heaven's harmony, meaning when the earth and the heavens are in agreement with each other. And how is that agreement made? Through these birds who are singing so melodiously. And then the poet concludes the first stanza by reiterating or we can say answering the question mentioned in the first line. What does he plant who plants a tree? Then you have the answer and then the conclusion. Let's move on to stanza number two. So in each stanza there is the same question asked and the same conclusion derived with a little deviation in the answer. So let's try and understand line number 10 and 11. What does he plant who plants a tree? He plants cool shade and tender rain. If you just close your eyes for a few seconds and imagine yourself sitting below a huge calm and dense tree and imagine the season to be summer it is hot everywhere but under the tree it is so cool it is so relaxing it is so calm so this is what happens when you nurture a tree and let it grow with the plantation of trees you also have tender rain so do you remember what happens to your mood when you experience the first rain of the year all your senses come alive you feel so great it is as if the drops of the rain are giving you sympathy or gentleness sentimentally it is as if the rain is giving you warmth or affection and because of all these reasons the poet has addressed trees as something which can bring in tender and gentle rains. Now how do trees bring in rains? The trees help create rain as they expel moisture into the atmosphere. Their roots draw it from the soil and their leaves return it to the air. Moving on to line number 12 and 13 and seed and bud of days to be and years that fade and flush again of course this is very self-explanatory when a tree is planted and when it grows over the years it will produce so many flowers it will produce so many seeds those seeds can yield into another group of trees and how does a seed grow into larger trees? Seeds grow into larger plants through the process of germination. Germination requires very little sunlight, temperature, water and air for the seed to turn into a plant. And therefore the poet has used the word bud. Bud is a plant that develops into a leaf, flower or shoot. So one tree can give thousands of seeds and thousands of buds for the coming days line number 13 and years that fade and flush again the years may fade meaning the years may disappear the years keep on passing by the days keep on passing by or we can say the time keeps on flushing meaning it will keep on Flowing time doesn't stop. But in the meantime, if a person has planted just one tree and nurtured it well, that tree can in turn grow thousands of other trees for the years that fade by, for the years that flush by. He plants the glory of the plain. Line number 14. What is a plain? Let's go back to geography. Plain is a large area of flat land with few trees. Or you can just say 
it is a large area of flat land assume that a person planted one single tree over there and let us also assume that a couple of years passed by and somebody took care of it one fine day the whole plain will be full of lush green trees and the poet has said this scenario this situation to be glorious glory of the plain what is glory glory is a state of high honor brilliant radiant beauty if you get good grades in english your parents will tell the society that this kid is my glory our glory kind of personification here because a plane is said to have glory so if there's a plane which is barren it is not as glorious as a plane which has lots of trees line number 15 he plants the forest's heritage what is the meaning of heritage it's any attribute or immaterial possession that is inherited from ancestors so there can be a sentence like my only heritage was my mother's blessings here the poet has said plants to be forests heritage just because one tree can give birth to thousands of tree and it can act like an inheritance so just because one single tree have the power to help and grow so many other trees and turn the whole area into a forest the poet has rightly termed tree as a forest's heritage line number 16 and 17 the harvest of a coming age the joy that unborn eyes shall see these things he plants who plants a tree what is the meaning of harvest harvest is the yield from plants in a single growing season so these valuable plants will give something or the other for the benefit of mankind it may be wood it may be some medicinal leaves or medicinal seeds it may be some food materials and therefore for generations to come this one particular tree that has been planted can keep on supplying things very necessary for the survival of future generations and therefore the poet has rightly termed this to be the joy that unborn eyes shall see the joy of getting so many valuable things from one single tree or maybe group of trees which have resulted from that one particular tree very nice usage of words here unborn eyes meaning the future generations the future generations will witness that just because my grandfather or great-grandfather planted a tree we are able to get the benefits out of it the stanza ends with the same finishing line and this is the pattern of this poem it opens up with a question and ends with the same finishing line as the answer moving on to the third and final stanza what does he plant who plants a tree he plants in sap and leaf and wood and we will also have to consider line number 21 22 and 23 to understand the meaning the poet says he plants in sap and leaf and wood in love of home and loyalty and far cast thought of civic good his blessings on the neighborhood so here we can imagine a very loyal person who is planting a tree with people in mind will so with society in mind he thinks hmm, one day my people will benefit just because I'm planting a tree so for the love of his hometown or the country that he or she is living in and just because he or she is loyal to that country loyal to the society and hometown the person plants a tree because this person is aware of all the benefits that it can reap in the near future to cast is to cause so here the word used is far cast or 
of foresighted thought of civic good civic is relating to the city or town or the people so the one who plants a tree thinks about the good of the people and he foresees the future and why is this person doing all of this it is just because of the love that he has for the society and the people living in it he or she plants a trees which will one day turn into a huge beautiful structure with stems branches leaves buds and seeds and over the years it will turn into a nice and dense forest with innumerable benefits to the society and one fine day his neighborhood people living in his neighborhood will remember him or her and bless that person the people of neighborhood will think that just because somebody was loyal to the hometown just because somebody wanted to help out the society we are contented we have nothing to worry and so we will bless him we will bless her with all our hearts just because of one simple reason the person planted a tree and took care of it his blessings on the neighborhood line number 23 who in the hollow of his hand holds all the growth of all our land a nation's growth from sea to sea steers in his heart who plants a tree we talked about how people will bless this person who plants a tree but then there is a nice metaphor here who in the hollow of his hand holds all the growth of all our land hollow is the empty space that we have in our hands in the palm that we have it is obviously empty but this empty hand this empty space has the potential has the power to grow a tree to do so many things which are sure to help the society so addressing this person who is planting a tree or who will be planting a tree the poet says the person's hand is hollow but this same hand also holds the future of a country because more the number of trees more the benefits more the exports and more the prosperity of that country therefore trees directly or indirectly benefit the nation to give you an example properly cared for trees are valuable and growing asset worth three times the investment 100 trees remove 53 tons of carbon dioxide and 430 pounds of other air pollutants every year and if these trees are strategically placed they can save up to 56 percent on annual air conditioning costs this is just one benefit out of the thousands of benefits of trees and therefore the poet has rightly said that if trees are planted in a large numbers it can definitely result into a perfect future for a country and line number 26 says a nation's growth from sea to sea so here the poet means overall growth of a nation when the poet states sea to sea so a person who plants a tree ensures a national growth and final line line number 27 is steers in his heart who plants a tree although here I've written a literal meaning but the exact meaning here is to stimulate or excite or arouse so just because a person wants to plant a tree and just because the feeling of loyalty and helping others are stimulated inside the same person the whole nation is benefited the whole country reaps the benefit of planting a tree so friends this is a very simple poem only at certain places you would require to understand the metaphors and personifications 
cited by the poet? And do you know which state has highest number of trees? It's Madhya Pradesh. Do you know the second state which has largest number of trees? It is Arunachal Pradesh. And then you also have Chhattisgarh, Orisha having huge forests. So friends, I hope you have understood this poem very well by now. If in case you have still doubts in your mind, questions, queries, confusions, please do not hesitate to let me know in the comment section. If you have some feedback, some recommendation, some suggestion on my style of teaching, yes, please let me know in the comment section. And finally, if there's a chapter or a poem that you want me to make a video explanation of, why hesitate when Professor DC is here? Just let me know. Just put your thoughts in the comment section and I would love to help you out. I thank you for watching and I hope you have a blessed day ahead.